Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlopes and welcome to the final part of the A to Z Ultimate Minting Dab on Polygon. And uh, I'm very excited to inform that till this point we've actually managed to create our collection which you can see over here, which is called the Nerdy Coder Clones. And this is now available on the Polygon network. We still have to create a dApp that allows users to mint these NFTs. Well, let's go ahead and actually do that. The next thing that we want to do is actually go ahead and see what we need to do next. So all that we need to do is go back to our v VS code. Now, if you followed the previous tutorial, uh, we can close these files over here. We don't even need the contracts at all. Um, all we need is basically this repo. Now, up until this point, we've just cloned the front end base dap. We haven't even done anything to it. So what I want to do is go and say new terminal. I want to run yarn add all to install all the package uh, packages in the package.json file. Once it's installed, what we can do is just uh, simply change out the ABI for of our contract and the contract address, and it should actually automatically mint. We also need to make sure that we are on the Polygon network, which is the network ID 137. I'll explain that in just a bit. We can so long head over back to our remix code and how would we get the ABI of this? Now, because our contract is verified, I believe that you can actually, um, if we click on the contract, I believe the ABI should already be here. So there's the ABI. We can basically just copy this. Remember, we've uh, verified our contract in the previous episode or the video. So we can just go ahead and copy the whole ABI. Next, what you want to do is go back to your Visual Studio code. And let's just wait for this to, to do its thing. Well, we can probably go ahead and just continue with it, right? Open your source file and go and open the contracts where it says .json files. Now, I'm going to make a new file and I'm just going to call this um, ncc.json. Okay. And this is just going to be purely the ABI. So I'm going to uh, copy, well, paste the copied stuff that I just copied from the contracts ABI in here. And when I click control save, because I have prettier installed on my VS code, it formats it nicely. This is basically the ABI that tells our contract or, or Web3 how to basically use our contract and what methods we can call on it and so on. So this is very nice to have. The next change that we need to do is we need to actually import the ncc.json. ncc just stands for Nerdy Coder, Coder Clones, so you can call it whatever you like. Next, what we want to do is open the Redux folder, go to the blockchain actions and import it over here where it says smart contract. I'm going to leave the word smart contract there, but I'm going to import the ncc json instead of the smart contract um, json i'm going to go ahead and search for everywhere where we use the smart contract name if we scroll down i can see that here we get the network data from a smart contract in the object called networks we don't have that anymore so i'm going to copy uh, comment that out next what we also do and i'm just going to make sure that it's explicitly searching only for that smart contract word is it grabs the ABI of the previous smart contract. We don't have the .ABI. Instead, we have the whole ABI in there. So you can take out .ABI. This network address we also don't have. So we need to replace it with something. We can go back to our smart contract and go and grab our smart contract address over here. So we can copy that. Go back to Visual Studio Code, paste it in there, and then we sure uh, we will sure enough create a contract which we can interact with. The last thing that we want to do is make sure that we check the network ID. Here we want to check if network ID is equal to the 137 network, which is Polygon. 
Once we've done this, there is one change that I've made, and that is um, the, ex the, the execution of how we verify uh, our contracts, uh, obviously, but also checking for the Ethereum in the browser, if that object exists. But we had a problem with the previous way we were doing this. We were checking for ETH.accounts, and the problem with this was that we weren't initializing the MetaMask pop-up to come up and ask for people to connect. Now, there is a simple change you can do, and what you can do is basically go to the Hashlips uh, site. Then, I want to go into the open source repo, and, well, not the open source one. Let me just go back. Let me see, is it example minter? Let's go into the source. Let me go into Redux over there, to blockchain, blockchain actions. And if I scroll down, I can see that I've done this, something like this, all right? Now, you probably uh, want to do this as well because this is a nice way of checking for it. So I'm going to copy this code over there. And the only thing that I want to replace is, uh, well, not replace, but add, is these two lines over there. And then instead of checking for window.ethereum, I'm going to be checking for, uh, is this connected? All right? Like so. If it's not connected to MetaMask, we will tell the user to install MetaMask. Perfect. Now, let me scroll up a bit. And let me just see what else is needed. So here you can see we're actually extracting the Ethereum from the window. So everywhere where we are using window.ethereum, we can just do a simple search and we can just replace that with Ethereum. So just replace, replace, uh, replace, replace, and that's about it. All right. Uh, that's about the chains that we're going to make there. And then there's also one more thing. Instead of, if we go back, instead of eth.accounts, we're going to do eth underscore request accounts. This will allow MetaMask to actually uh, pop up and ask if we want to join the network. We are done. We don't even need to run Truffle and migrate things because we have the ABI uh, over here that we've imported. Remember here in the ncc.json, we do have the contract address, which is enough for a web3 to know what we're interacting with and now we can simply run the dap in order to run the dap what we can do is we can just say yarn uh, start and if you have yarn installed then this would start running the scripts uh, for starting up our base application now let's just wait for this to completely load and then we're going to see if it works we can just go ahead and make sure that we are on the right network, which is Polygon. Let's just do a test. Let's switch to a different network and say connect. And it says change network to Polygon. We would gladly do so. And let's go and select Polygon network. We go and say connect. And there it goes. There it connects and it has everything in it. Now, this is our base DAP. And I actually wanted to do this with the smart, um, sorry, not that. I actually wanted to do all this, not with this repo that we've done with the base uh, base app. Uh, sorry, I actually wanted to use the example NFT Minter, which is fine, which we can quickly go and grab and install and just copy over all the files. I'll do this with you so that you don't get confused. The reason why I'm saying that is because I've made a lot of UI changes, which I would like in this uh, minting dap so i'll do that now with you guys in just a second but what i want you to notice is if we were not connected to the site it says connected if i go and say disconnect all accounts from this site and i go and refresh and i say connect it actually pops up this question for me to go and connect and that's exactly what we want we don't really want to work with this repo like I just explained. So go ahead and close all these files. Um, you might want to keep open the files if we want to um, drag some of the files op 
over into the new repo. But what I'll suggest you do is go to the desktop or go to your file. Uh, go open. Go to wherever you've saved it. Mine's in the collection. So I just want to go there so that I at least have access to these two files. Um, then what we want to do is open a new terminal right there. We're going to do this a bit quicker because I know I don't want to waste your time. Time is precious. Okay, so go to the example NFT Minter and that is really the one we want. Okay, then go and copy the example NFT Minter. This was updated two days ago. So that is pretty cool. That's the one we want. Then go back to the Visual Studio Code, say git clone and just by doing this you I, you guys will actually see how easy it is to just start this up from scratch right next um, we have our example nft minter over there we want to cd into it so usually i reopen the repo into it but i want to just cd because i also want access to these files so i can just copy them over so let's go and cd into the example minter so you go cd example minter and once we're in this repo, we can now say yarn add all because we need to install the dependencies in order for this to work. Once we've done that, let's go and make sure that we have everything that we've copied and pasted from our uh, front end base app into here. It's just for reference, right? So I really want to copy this and this. So I'm going to say copy, command C. And I'm going to paste it in there. I see this creates a copy, so I'm going to actually delete that one and then use this one. Just so that you guys will have all the files that I've been working with. Next, I had this deployed file, which I just want to keep. You guys can also have a look at this. Uh, so I'm going to say copy and in this main folder, I'm going to say paste so that I also have it in there. And what was the last thing that we've done? Oh, we also had our, in the source directory, remember in the contracts folder, we had the ncc.json. So just go ahead and copy that. Uh, let's go to the example uh, NFT Minter and let's go into its source, into its contracts and paste it. Next, let's go make the changes that we've done to the Redux actions folder all we've done and changed this was change the contract that we're importing in this case it's still lunar landers because of the previous tutorial but now we what we want to do is import from the ncc contract over there and everything here should stay the same that's why i'm keeping this previous little part of this video in there because this is exactly what i've just done remember that we've in, uh, added these two lines and we've also then changed everything to Ethereum as well as into this line. There is two things that we still need to do, and that is to remove this ABI, actually remove this as well, comment out this line, uncomment that. I'm going to remove this. Network ID should be 137, and then we need our contract address. Remember, you get your contract address from your contract on polygon scan which is fine uh, so let's go back there let's go actually put this in and uncomment it so your code should look like this at this stage we can go ahead and save this and then actually go back to where we have this base dap and let's just remove it because this base front end dap was actually the wrong one that i didn't want anyway in the first place now that this is all installed, um, we can actually go and run it. Remember just, you have to run the yarn at all inside of the root of this file. If you run it outside, it won't work. So just make sure that you're inside this file. Um, so let's go say yarn start. And when I say yarn start, what's going to happen with the example dap is we still did Lunar Lander stuff. Um, in the previous tutorial. So go and check those guys out. They are pretty cool at what they're doing and the team is amazing. 
but I'm going to take this DAP and I'm going to convert it into the Nerdy Coder clones, okay? So I'm going to reuse my code just to do that, just because I, I've done a bit of UI on this already. You can see when we click connect, this already wants us to connect. There are a few things that I need to change, and that is in the code, if we go down, we can see that this refers to Ethereum, and it's doing that on a few places. So I'm just going to search everywhere where there's Ethereum and go and make sure that I get this uh, right. So there's Ethereum, and I'm going to change it to Polygon. Okay, so Polygon, and there as well, Polygon. And please make sure that you are on the right network. Okay, and then also there. That's just uh, standard things that I want to update, just so that I have the right terminology when people trying uh, try to connect to the DAP. For instance. If someone was on the wrong network and they connect, uh, let's just reload, connect. I can still I can still connect because it is the it is the right um, MetaMask, but it says change to Polygon, right? And it won't let you through, but it does connect your DAP, which is perfectly fine. If we then switch over to the Polygon network, uh, which is over there. Okay, then we connect, then we will be inside the DAP. Now, this does say 20 out of 10,000, and this, all this information is wrong at this stage because it's not 100 Ethereum, it's 100 Matic, and I'll prove that by just clicking on the Buy button. So there are some kind of changes that we need to make. Here you can see that it will charge the user 100 Matic to mint an NFT. What we have to remember is that this is the previous project that was deployed on the Ethereum network, so I do need to make a bit of updates. But that being said, the 20 NFTs do exist and it is the data being pulled through. And the same goes for the 100 Ethereum. So all this stuff is dynamic and this is a site that you guys can also use and revamp and make it into your own. I'm going to go ahead and do a bit of changes on the UI, but I'm going to show you first how to change some of the crucial things and leave the UI up to you to go and update. All right, let's go and see how we can actually make this DAP look very, very cool. So the next thing that we can do is I just paste in, uh, pasted in this new font that I want to use. So I'm just going to copy its name. And then I'm going to remove the Lunaland font, which is fine. And then what you want to do is to update the main font of everything. I believe there is some kind of CSS file, which I've probably imported here. There's the theme, there's the reset. So let's go to style. Maybe it's in reset. Um, there we go. There's the font face. So what we want to do is replace that but this time it's the TT, TTF file format. Also specified here, TTF, that's cool. And we can call this font family, I don't know, I'm gonna call it Coda. That just sounds cool. So Coda font family, and we wanna change the whole font family to Coda. All right, so if you make these updates and you save, then uh, you should get back to to your app and it should have updated just going to give it another refresh if it doesn't want to update then maybe we need to import the uh, woff format so let me go back and let me actually go into the not the desktop but in here i do have a copy of this font in woff format so I'm going to put that in there, uh, then go back to the reset and change this to WOFF again, WOFF. And once we have that, we can actually delete the TTF format. And there we go. How cool is that? I like this font. It looks very pixelated and looks game-like. I really like it. Um, we're going to keep it like that. We want to update this image, but in order to do that, we need some images. The next thing that we most probably want to do 
is go and add some images. Now I've got a bunch of images over there um, with an icon PNG and I'm just going to go ahead and choose a few of my PNGs. I'm going to actually choose everything from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, let's choose about, I don't know, 14 seems enough. I'm going to drop these in there and for the ones that it wants to replace, I'm going to replace them. And then I'm going to delete everything up from here to there. These are the old Lunar Lander ones. So I'm just going to remove that so that I have the new, new set in there. I'm going to close this file. Now obviously this is going to complain and it's going to say that we can't find... Uh, whatever this is. I'm also going to do this and maybe oh this is a very cool one I want to use so I'm going to make a copy of this and I'm going to delete this icon over there move that to the trash and I'm going to call this icon okay so now I've got this running I'm going to close that off close this off close the reset CSS I then want to go to my app.j, seeing that everything is imported here anyway for me. I want to go and then rename all these to what we've uh, called them, which is just going in chronological order down. So I most probably should have done this in the beginning anyway, where I specified going from 1 to 14 instead of these weird arbitrary numbers. But that's fine. So here we got 14 uh, basic images. Did I skip one? Because I see there's one, two, three. Okay, so there's no five. All right, there is no five. So I need to kind of update these. Uh, what's gonna be the best to do this? Um, maybe the best to do this is to go back into my images, go back to my uploads and maybe just add I don't know, uh, carry on with it. So 15 and 16. Let's drag them and drop them in there as well so that we can carry on with this um, for 15. And then obviously I want 16 in there, but I'm going to rename this to 5. Now there's already a 5, so we most probably need to move this all up. Uh, I don't like working like this because... Um, it doesn't feel clean, so I have to unfortunately go and do this and update everything. So that's 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. There we go. Um, now we have all the elements that I want in here. So if I save, it compiles, and now we get this Mint A Lunar Lander, which we still need to change, but we're going to go ahead and see all these cool NFTs. Now this is pretty cool, we can, um, it's scalable and it looks pretty nice. Um, so what I'm going to do next is just quickly go back and change everywhere in the project where it says Lunar Lander, right? So everywhere in the project where it says Lunar Lander, we want to go and change it. Now it does say it in the smart contract flat over there, that's because we've built it before. I just want to make sure where is that smart contract flat okay um, probably in the migrations no it's not the contracts regardless let's just go ahead and uh, replace everywhere where we need to so our thing is going to be called a nerdy so it's going to be called the Nerdy Coder Clones. Okay, but I think I need to call it a Nerdy Coder Clone uh, if we want to do something, right? So obviously this is the title of the web page, so I'm going to call it Nerdy Coder Clones. But whenever we're talking about one like this, I'm going to say Mint a Nerdy Coder Clone. And that looks cool. So let's go ahead and do it here as well. Uh, let's do it there. Let's do it over there. So 
perfect. Uh, okay, so this I need to update. So let me quickly go to OpenC and see what the... There we go. We're going to copy that whole thing because I need to change the URL that this points to, like so. Uh, let me just make sure that I've got my clones again. There we go. Uh, one, one nerdy coder clone costs and then data because this is all dynamic, right? And I can just enter here Matic. Matic. Okay. So that people know. Uh, then that's the contract name. There's a bunch of these other contract stuff. But these are just contract required the this contract. We can probably call it clones, but we don't use the truffle um, interface. So all these extra stuff that you see over there, especially everything uh, to do with the contracts living in here, you can actually get rid of apart from this. Um, this one right so we can actually remove all the JSON files that's been migrated uh, because we don't use them at all but needless to say after doing these little bits of updates you can now see if we go to our project we get the mint a nerdy coder clone connect to the polygon network let's go and connect and there you see mint a nerdy coder clone 20 out of 10,000 10,000 we need to amend because it's only a thousand NFTs, right? So that's a manual um, one that you need to update, as well as this if clause. If you see, if it reaches a thousand, right? If the supply does not equal, well, let me just see. So if the supply is going to be equal to a thousand, then obviously we've minted all the NFTs. So I'm just going to change this clause so you can see how it would look. And here it would say, technically, that everything is sold out, the sale has ended. You can still find Nerdy Coder clones on uh, OpenSea. So in that case, we need to say S for clones. So you can still find Nerdy Coder clones on OpenSea. And then when we click on it, it should take us to the OpenSea repository, basically um, the collection, and we'll update these images also. But it's going to take us here and then people will get to trade the nerdy coder clones. Jeez, guys, these things look so cool. Anyway, uh, what you want to do next, and you can't see it because on the tab there's an icon. So what you want to do after this is just make sure that you change this if statement back so that um, it works correctly. The next thing that you want to focus on is actually going into your public folder and changing all these icons. Now I'm going to go ahead and just design some of these icons, also going to design some of the stuff that we need for OpenC, just to make sure that we can edit our uh, OpenC repository and our collection. So I'll get back to you once I've designed a few images and we can quickly update our website and our collection and then we're going to be putting this collection on top of our web host and our server so that we can host the website. The last few things that you would need to do is if you go to your collection and you click on the edit collection button, you'll need to upload these few images. So create a logo that is 350 by 350 pixels. I've already created these, so I'm just going to upload them. And it's quite easy, just make sure they stay in the pixel ratio that is specified in each section and it should all uh, look good, right? So there we have that, nerdy coder clones, then we also have that and I added a little bit of a description. For the categories, these can be collectibles, um, fold in a bunch of uh, links to your Twitter um, and social media profiles. And then for the royalties, I've added 2.5% because I see that that's what OpenSea asks. So I'm going to keep it the same as, as theirs. And then you put your wallet address that you want the, the royalties to be paid out to. Then what you can also do is select a blockchain where you'd like the new items to be added by default. Okay, obviously this will be Polygon. I think if you have more blockchains, it will go there. And then obviously what 
um, people can pay uh, with for your tokens, well, for your NFTs. Now, I see that you get to choose the USDC, but I'm just going to leave it to Polygon and DAI. Oh, sorry, Polygon, <laughs> but I read DAI there, so you can choose that, but I'm just going to leave it to the Polygon ETH. Ethereum, I think it's wrapped Ethereum, and then I like to set it to covered. It just looks much more, you know, clean and, and nicer. We don't have ex, uh, sensitive content really. Sensitive content's more for pornographic or whatever kind of, uh, you know, videos and content you have, which is not good. So uh, that's where you need to take that if you have. But anyway, uh, I am ready and done. I'm going to submit my changes. And then once you've selected or submitted your changes, they should all be updated immediately. So if I go to my collections and I now go and check, there's my main collection, which you guys can go and have a look at. Oh, this looks so cool. And there's the NFTs. The last thing that we want to do is actually give the user um, the ability to go and mint them and that's why we've been creating this dap now the few images that i would just like to replace in this dap is if you go to the public folder you can see that we have a fab icon we've got an image which is a 192 and also a 512 so i've already created these images and you just need to kind of replace these so that they look um, good on your site as well okay so I've replaced them as well. And that should be it. I don't think there's anything else we need to do. So just to clear things up a little bit for you guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial, by the way. Um, but the thing that I want to clear up is that I will be creating a repo uh, repository on the GitHub page, including both of these repos. So it's not going to be a single repo. It's going to have the generative art open source in it. Obviously nothing in the output, but all the images in the input. Please don't go ahead and make copies and upload these with your own addresses to the blockchain. Uh, feel free to play around with it, but I don't want a lot of these um, NFTs to, you know, be on the blockchain because it's just going to look like duplicates. And this collection is the original. So, um, but maybe it makes it even more valuable then. <laughs> um, anyway, we also have the example NFT Minter. Now, this is actually the repo that we're going to do a build in. So what you'll need to do is make sure that you have opened this and we can confirm that by running LS uh, down here, LS. We can see that we are in this repository. So let's just do our last check by running yarn start. And I also just want to double check in the code before we do this. Um, just want to double check in the code that on the minter that I am setting the gas limit. Now I am setting the gas limit, but for some reason, right? Um, oh, and we need to change this um, to address. But I don't, I don't think I'm going to include this um, in this um, repo. So I'm just going to leave that out. But um, what I want to say is, if you leave out the gas, sometimes, especially with the new MetaMask update, if we go and connect and we say that we want to mint one of our clones, we can say go and mint it. And sometimes, because of uh, MetaMask and not being able to work it out correctly, now I don't know if this hasn't changed on the Polygon network yet, uh, because this still seems fine. But on the Ethereum network, it's been a bit bad and it couldn't really calculate exactly what it needs to do. So what I'm going to just uh, do is leave that then out. It doesn't look like it's doing anything really. So I'm just going to comment that out. And then also I get to comment out this last section over here, which basically explains um, that little bit of the gas. Anyway, um, please make sure that you are connected to the right network, Polygon main network, and the correct address. Okay, so obviously people need to make sure that's fine. Please note, once you've made the pur purchase, you cannot undo this action. Obviously, that's fine. Now, I like how it looks. I think I'm going to just uh, make this button uh, with the black background just to fit with our design. So let's go ahead and just do that last little part. 
Uh, this will be done right here at the top. There would be a color of a background and we can just say 0, six zeros. That should make it black. There we go. And uh, yeah, guys, go and mint an NFT. Uh, basically, this is where the tutorial is going to end. I'll show you how to do a build and then you can upload your build. So what you want to do, if you're happy with the DAP, you can run yarn uh, build. And then once you do this, a new build folder will pop up here. And all these assets that get gets built for you, you want to actually upload that to your server. So lastly, the thing I want to show you, after you've done the build, you will now in the build file see all these folders. You can go and right click and go ahead and say compress. And once you have this, you can go back to your uh, server where you want to upload the data. We have this index.php uh, which we can now remove because we're going to put our own uh, DAP in here. You can click on the upload button and it should take you to that page. Drop your zip file with all the uh, data, data files of the build. Sorry, it's getting a bit late so I'm going to head off to bed soon. But uh, then click on back and extract all the files in here. So this will extract all the files and you can remove that zip like so. Please make sure not to touch your metadata, your metadata file. Um, because the metadata file is actually the file that needs to stay there forever. So make sure that you don't touch it. Um, there must also be a uh, password lock that you can put on it, which I usually do. But um, you can go ahead and try that out. Now, when we go to our, how can I say, our website, so what was it called? The Nerdy Coder Clones, right? Dot metadata, we can still see, we can still see if we can access that. But anyway, if you go to the base URL, which is the Nerdy Coder Clones dot online, you will actually be able to right now, at this very second, buy one of my NFTs. And how cool is that? So you've learned how to do this in this tutorial. And I just want to thank you guys so very much for uh, spending the time with me. Um, you know, taking the journey with me always means a lot to me and uh, can't wait to do uh, much more videos with you guys in the future. Thank you so much for almost 3000 subscribers and I'll see you guys in the future videos. Cheers for now.